Thank you, Wasim. Thank you very much. So now we're going to get some additional insights into the cloud market. Uh, would you please welcome to the stage the Research Director for European Services at 451 Research, Rory Duncan. Rory. Rory. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Uh, is my mic on? No, it is. Thank you. Hooray. Um, you'll all be very pleased to hear that I'm the last speaker before the breakout session, so only 18 more uh, PowerPoint slides. Um, uh, so I'm here today to give you uh, uh, an overview of the managed hosting and cloud market. Thank you. This is my just-in-case microphone. Um, and um, uh, so an overview of the managed hosting and cloud market. And um, as you can probably tell, I'm, I'm not from around here. Um, uh, however, uh, you may also find that some of my references are a little bit kind of agricultural. Uh, so I apologize for that, but I'm a, I'm a country boy. I'm from the northwest of Scotland. Um, so what I wanted to talk about, of course, first was fields. Uh, or uh, rivers, as we call them in Scotland, or if, when it does stop raining, swamps, bogs, or whatever you like. Um, and clearly, when it comes to talking about your digital infrastructure, how many of you could say that you have a, a greenfield site? Is Peter here? I was talking with him this morning. Uh, he's a small startup. Um, is he here? No, he's not here. Uh, he did say he would be here, so I'll have words with him afterwards. But I guess most of you um, probably have uh, some kind of infrastructure that looks like this. Or if you're a partner, many of your customers will have an infrastructure that looks like this. And I, is that it? Back on again? Use this one? OK. Um, so again, oh, there we go. So to use the farming analogy again, um, when we're looking at uh, greenfield sites, we're actually really looking at established digital infrastructures. Now, if you look at the example I've got here, uh, a typical farm has um, applications and data. It has silos, in this case, perhaps of IT. Um, it has networks internally that connect all the different functions together. And of course, if you look at the, the roads that are there, um, farms don't exist in isolation. You have suppliers, you have other forms of services that come into the farm and, and go out again. Um, and I think this is probably quite a good way of looking at uh, most established digital infrastructures in this way. Um, often you'll hear people talk about things like, oh, you know, the problem of legacy, uh, you know, all this migration. We shouldn't just write it off like that. We should also be looking at the challenges and opportunities that integration brings. So integration, respect for the fact that not everything has to move to the cloud, right? Not everything has to be changed, um, uh, uh, completely um, moved to another platform, and so on. Okay, now I know this is probably not news to many of you, but you won't, have, you won't see me standing here talking about why everybody has to move to the cloud as soon as possible, okay? Now, the reason for saying that is, of course, uh, we have all uh, complex, often quite detailed digital uh, infrastructures that we either use or our partners or our suppliers or customers use. And um, it's very much the case that where you are is part of a much larger ecosystem of service providers and others. Now, this isn't to test your eyesight. This is to show um, something that we've been working on for the last few months. In fact, you're the, f the first audience globally to see this. My market, yes, <laughs> thank you. My marketing director might kill me afterwards, but this is something that uh, myself and my colleague Penny Jones, who's here somewhere, have been working on. This is in fact London, and I know that um, many of you are focused on the UK market or at least UK companies. And what this does is this uh, illustrates exactly that ecosystem for digital infrastructure. Uh, on the left-hand side, we've got the interconnect providers, the wholesale retail guys. So these are the ones providing the, the space and the, and the energy and the light and so on. We also have the retail co-location providers, those that are 
offering the data centers and so on. And then on the right-hand side, we have um, services that are starting to go further up the stack. So the managed cloud, the uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, uh, as well as uh, other forms of web and application hosting and so on, okay? So we shouldn't uh, forget that there is a diverse ecosystem out there of which you are part, and London, as this first uh, report that we've done shows, uh, is rich and is growing uh, and is extremely important for that reason. Now, um, it's not just in theory. Um, again, this is an exclusive. You're the first audience to see these figures because I was um, arguing with a colleague of mine last night and persuaded him, let's do a new cut of these figures. We can show it here. This is UK figures. This is not global. This is not generic slide. This is about the UK market. So this is the managed hosting and cloud market uh, in the UK. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that, that managed hosting is showing very strong, healthy growth. Uh, we've got uh, 2015 on the left-hand side at around about $1.3 billion, uh, uh, going out about 2.6 billion by 2019. That's a pretty strong, about 18.4% growth. On the right-hand side for the UK, we've got the cloud market. So that's infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, as well as infrastructure software as a service. Now, admittedly, it's still a relatively slow, uh, small market in monetary terms, about 0.4 billion. But by 2019, it's going to about 1.9 billion. So again, we can see that there's strong growth there. So when it comes to the UK, um, let nobody tell you that it's not a diverse, growing, uh, developing market that we find ourselves in. Okay, so much of this opportunity we see is being driven by what we call hybrid means. Now, there's been a lot of talk today uh, about hybrid cloud. I won't ask anybody to give me a definition right now, but I can maybe provide one for you. Um, hybrid cloud, we define as, it's a delivery model, right? It's not a specific product, it's not a specific service, it's a delivery model. And ideally, hybrid cloud will allow you to run clouds and interoperate them. Um, they will run independently, but you can, in fact, uh, get the best out of using those separate clouds by enabling this integration, by enabling the dynamic exchange of information and so on, okay? That's as simple as that, it's a delivery model. Okay, so where is the market headed? Now, you won't see in any of my slides, again, there will be no magical quadrants, no spells, potions, or anything else. What we do is based on primary research, okay? So I'll be sharing with you some snapshots of that primary research that we've done in the UK, in Europe, uh, and elsewhere. <clears throat> so first of all, what we're seeing is that, in many cases, service delivery models are consolidating. Uh, this, again, may not be news to you, but there, cer there certainly seems to be this blurring of the lines between what we call cloud, what we call hosting, what we call co-location, and so on. It's this kind of um, extraction of the technology component uh, so that we're concentrating much more on the services that are being delivered, the applications that can help that, um, and things like bundles, uh, creating what we would see as a kind of a, a managed services uh, global function. Um, and for that reason, it's, it's causing uh, disruption in the industry and in terms of what is being offered. And of course, it increases the choice that is available for, for customers. And part of that is because uh, cloud capabilities are evolving. Uh, excuse the simplicity of this, but from cloud 1.0 to cloud 2.0 seems a bit of a jump. I guess it's not about cloud 1.0 switching off, and then cloud 2.0 coming on. This is about a phase transition, right? And the first phase of the cloud, it was about um, early adopters getting into new markets. It was about disruptive innovation. It was about fairly simple engineering-led engagements and so on. And in many cases, many of the, the new entrants to those markets uh, won. Where we're going to now, we're kind of transitioning to cloud 2.0 which is where we see sustained innovation, where we see critical applications being hosted in a cloud environment, where we're seeing wide-scale enterprise adoption. Now, we're not quite there yet. We're in this kind of transitionary phase, but it will mean that we have a, a cloud uh, environment that is uh, able to respond better to business needs. It's not a technical requirement. It's about business needs. 
the business can come back and determine how it's going to best use the capabilities of the cloud on offer. Okay, so um, again, back to silos. Um, again, the agricultural reference. But I think this is important because when we're looking at what does that actually mean in principle, what do we mean when we're talking about silos? Clearly, IT and applications can exist in silos. And there's nothing wrong in that, right? There's some very good reasons why. Back to the farm. You know, the farmer will have wheat in one silo, barley, will have corn, uh, will have oats in another one. There's a reason why, okay? And currently, as we're going through this phase adoption to cloud 2.0, you know, that's not an issue. There's good reasons for that. And there's good reasons why it should stay like that. However, um, going forward, if they're not integrated and, and part of a process, this is where the challenges with uh, cloud 2.0 come. You know, using the farm analogy again, if you're wanting to make a, a, growth, a, a loaf of multigrain bread, for example, you have to find a way of mixing them together uh, controlling that process, otherwise you're not going to get your product at the end of the day. Okay? Um, and for that reason, um, we see this as being uh, a real opportunity when it comes to cloud 2.0. However, um, it's not as simple, of course, as connecting them all together, as I'm sure many of you know who have tried doing this. It does create hybrid environments that add additional management challenges some things are not very straightforward. In hybrid environments, of course, you have uh, additional application languages, data formats, uh, hypervisors, uh, operating environments, and so on. And as you've put at the very bottom of this slide, there are some new things to think about, things like price performance, uh, billing, and so on, and a whole slew of other service providers coming in who are saying, yeah, we can offer that. We can do all this for you. Okay. So those are the challenges, but of course, the, the thing about the challenges is they can be addressed. And uh, we've got a couple of ways of looking at this. If you look at um, implementation of cloud as part of the IT as a service um, way of looking at things, where business is driving the needs of the XAAS, a solution that you've got, that's a very good way of doing it. And we have uh, what we call a best execution venue strategy that we talk about. Um, there is no one way to implement an application. There is uh, plenty of choice about provisioning. And each method has its own validity. Back to the farm again, there are some things you may not want to change there. If you have application workloads that are stable, that are fixed, that are established, that don't necessarily need to change, you can, uh, uh, in, you can use a hybrid cloud to integrate uh, the output of that or the application data. Clearly, where you have something that requires to be short-term and scalable, this is where other forms of cloud come in, whether it's uh, you know, the, uh, the Lawn Tennis Association of Wimbledon, uh, who have this huge scalable cloud for two weeks or, or not. Uh, this is a good example of why it would be. So not every application is the same, and best execution venue will allow you to make that choice. OK? Uh, are we OK so far? Yeah. Great. OK. Uh, let's go on to, I guess, share a few bits of feedback. So again, this is back to our primary research. We do lots of research all the time, publishing reports each day. I'm showing you a kind of a quick sneak peek of some of the latest reports that we've done to give you a taster. And you can always come up and see me afterwards if you're interested to know how to find out a bit more. Okay, so the first one is, um, when it comes to the budgets in hosting and cloud services, we're finding that an increasing amount, in this case about 70%, of budgets for cloud are being spent on non-infrastructure hosting services. That's an interesting one. That's something that's changing uh, quite, quite rapidly over time. So companies are wanting to spend more on managed services, application hosting, and perhaps more importantly than ever, security services, giving concerns about data protection, uh, privacy, and so on. Uh, secondly, when you drill down a little bit more into these three areas of the managed services, application hosting, and the security services, um, which are the parts of these that are leading the spending plans? And if you look here, you'll see that uh, things like backup and recovery, um, database hosting, endpoint security tend to lead, but they're not the only ones. Um, 
clearly, you know, email hosting is not going to go away overnight. I, for one, would wish email would go away overnight, but, you know, clearly there's a lot of business there still. Um, there are other things, things like disaster recovery, site recovery, uh, things like data encryption and so on. Um, there's a huge demand for this, and we're seeing this from customers who are asking us uh, how providers are wanting to uh, offer this in the market. Okay, and then the third slide here uh, is, um, I guess, a directional slide, really, which is the fact that we see that the road to hybrid cloud for customers is still private. It's the private cloud that provides this kind of bridge, this integration potential uh, to other forms of, of cloud. In other words, when we asked if organizations configured any of the following clouds for interoperability, sorry, interoperability, that's a long word, um, with, uh, in, a, in a hybrid environment, it was the private cloud uh, that led this, that enabled this. So it's important to see that we're looking at blended delivery models and we're looking at ways that we can facilitate other forms of cloud implementation for, for applications. On the right hand side, I thought I'd include something about public cloud because this is something that people ask us about all the time. At the moment, I'm writing an update on my public cloud in Europe report. Quick plug there, but that's okay. Um, and we're trying to see how things have changed, how attitudes have changed towards public cloud and what customers are doing. And we're finding that in, in many cases, um, companies have decided to take data and applications that were part of a public cloud and bring it back into a private cloud. They're finding they have more control, uh, more management capabilities, and they can leverage uh, better some of the security functions that are part of the private cloud uh, offerings from a number of providers. Okay, so that's the three. Um, and my last slide for you is uh, the key takeaways. I've talked about, you know, back to the field, right? It's not about replace, you know, I always talked about this rip and replace idea. It's about integration. Sure, migration is an option, but have it as part of a process and a step in, in your digital infrastructure. We are moving into this next phase of cloud adoption, cloud 2.0, and we're seeing that that means that IT spend is shifting in cloud and hosting to non-infrastructure hosting services. It does mean that there's a corresponding increase in demand for things like security, managed services, and so on. Um, and then I guess uh, I wanted to emphasize uh, when it comes to your service providers, make sure that they can articulate this to you, whoever they are. If they can give you a good reason why, you should look at migration or integration, get them to spell it out uh, exactly um, so that it's not a, a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to cloud. Um, that was it. I'm here for the rest of the day if you want to talk with me. Thank you very much for listening.